Hello friends! In this video, we will learn how to create screens with beautiful and dynamic scrolling. Today, we will dive into a powerful concept in Flutter called slivers. We will explore what they are, why we need them, and how to use them to create beautiful and efficient interfaces. If you want to better understand how to work with large lists and complex layouts, this video is definitely for you. Let's start by creating a new project, where we will call our app, which will initially have an empty scaffold. To do this, we use the Material app and Scaffold widgets. Next, as the body of our scaffold, we need to pass a custom scroll view. This widget accepts a list of slivers and is responsible for managing them. Note that we can only pass special sliver widgets here. If we try to pass a regular widget, like text, we will get an error. We will go through the main sliver widgets with examples, starting with Sliver App Bar. Sliver App Bar is a flexible app bar that can change size, hide, or stay fixed. We are interested in the flexible space parameter we usually pass a flexible spacebar widget to it. It has several parameters, the main ones being background and title. Let's pass an image in the background and a text in the title. After running the code, we see that we now have an app bar, but it behaves like a regular app bar. The reason for this is that there are no other elements in the custom scroll view. So let's add a sliver fill remaining widget. The sliver fill remaining widget fills the remaining space, making it perfect for footers, placeholder screens, or when we need to combine a sliver app bar with regular widgets. For now, let's leave it empty and restart the app. As we can see, this time we can scroll, and our app bar moves up. However, this still isn't what we need. So, let's proceed with customizing our sliver app bar. First, let's look at the parameters related to height. Let's start with expanded height. For example, let's set it to 300. After restarting the app, our app bar becomes larger and now scrolls with a parallax effect. However, at the end, it merges with the background, so let's give it a different color. Now, as we scroll, our app bar shrinks and the background widget is replaced by the title widget with the background color. Then, when we scroll to the sliver fill remaining, our app bar moves upwards. However, we can use the pinned parameter which will keep the app bar always visible on the screen. Here's how it works. Now, let's look at the toolbar height parameter. With this parameter, we can set the minimum height for our app bar. This is how it looks. Next, let's replace the pinned parameter with floating. When floating is set to true, the app bar will collapse but as soon as we scroll up from anywhere, it will appear without the need to scroll to the top. Here's how it looks. Now, let's start building a simple page. First, we'll have an app bar with a welcome message for the user. It will have a white background. For the background, we'll pass a column with simple widgets. Note that we don't need the title parameter here. As we can see, we now have a regular app bar. Now, let's add another app bar after it. Yes, we can use multiple app bars in a single custom scroll view, and they will scroll dynamically. The second app bar will have a ground color and a height of 200.
it will have a flexible space bar, and for the background, we will display the balance in a column. In addition, we'll add the title parameter, which will just display text. Let's restart the app. Notice how the second app bar scrolls. Initially, the text from the title overlaps with the background, but then it replaces it. This creates a nice animation in the app. Let's now adjust the position of the title. We can use the title padding parameter to specify the padding we want. We also need to set the center title parameter to false, as it is set to true by default. Now, it looks much better. After that, let's add a third app bar. It will display quick actions related to the wallet. Its background will be white, and the height will be 140. It will also have a flexible space bar with a background parameter. We will use simple layout here, and we won't focus on that. To display elements, we will write a separate function to avoid repetition in the code. Note that we will also make this app bar pinned, meaning it will always be visible on the screen. Let's restart the app and see what has changed. As we can see, it looks much better now, and we can see a beautiful animation while scrolling. As we can notice, during scrolling, this widget disappears. To fix this, we need to set toolbar height to the same height as expanded height. Now, what if we want to add some text, for example, showing the latest transactions? As we know, we can't just pass a regular widget here. To help us, we can use a special widget called Sliver to Box Adapter. This widget acts as a wrapper, allowing us to use regular widgets in a custom scroll view. Let's use it to add text. As we can see, it works. Now, let's add a list of transactions. Previously, we did this with a list view widget, but Sliver has a special widget for this called Sliver List. It accepts a delegate parameter into which we pass a Sliver Child Builder delegate. The Sliver Child Builder delegate has one positional parameter and several named ones. The positional parameter is similar to Item Builder in List View. Here, we will write it in the same way to display items. We will make half of the items show income and the other half show expenses. We will call this function and return the result in our builder. Next, we pass the named parameter child count. In this case, we want to display 20 items. Let's restart the app and see what has changed. We now have a transaction list, and notice how our app bars scroll. The last app bar always stays on screen because it's pinned. As we can see, the iPhone's island slightly covers the text, so let's increase the size of our app bar. Now, let's make our second app bar floating. This way, we'll be able to view the balance simply by scrolling up anywhere, without having to scroll all the way to the top. Now, let's discuss Sliver Fill remaining. It has a child parameter, and we can pass a column, for example. Let's create a small widget that simulates a page footer. Let's run the app. As we can see, everything works. 
Today, we've covered what slivers are, how to use them, and the different types of slivers in Flutter. We've also seen examples of creating various interfaces like animated headers, scrollable lists, and more. I hope you now have a better understanding of how to use slivers to create more complex and optimized interfaces. Thank you for your attention. If the video was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.